Hello everyone. Um, so today we are going to discuss about um, biology paper two, which is the MCQ paper, and this is for the extended um, part. It's like basically for those students who are taking the extended paper and the science and. We're going to do February, March 2021, and it's this is the code for this apparently. So um, let's move ahead with the first question. So there are a total of 40 questions. I I mean I hope you guys all know like in the MCQ paper there are actually 40 questions that need to be completed in 45 minutes. And yeah, so number one. Wood lice are small organisms that live in damp places. In an experiment, three live wood lice are put into a glass container. The diagram shows what happens after 30 minutes. Wood lice placed in a bowl over here. They were placed over here. And then after 30 minutes, they moved towards the damp side of the container. This is the water. This is a chemical to absorb the water. And this is the gauze to keep lies afloat so that they don't um, fall below or into the water so now the question is asking which characteristic of living organisms is shown by the experiment it's definitely not growth it's definitely not nutrition not respiration but sensitivity why is it that because if you read the if you read the question they say three wood lice were put into a glass container and this diagram this diagram shows what happens after 30 minutes so before 30 minutes the wood lice they were actually in the center over here because this is the place where they were placed and after 30 minutes this is what the diagram is showing that they moved towards the damp side so it's going to be sensitivity because they are responding to the um, things in the environment they're moving towards the uh, place where it's more damp where there's more moisture where there's water present so with these things present it's surely sensitivity why not respiration because respiration requires the use of glucose and oxygen but in this case there is no such, um, uh, I should say, there's no such reactant present over here. Um, there is no glucose present here. There is oxygen present, but there is no glucose. If one of these are not present, then the respiration can take place. But if you think logically, when you reread the question two to three times, you sh can just imagine that they were originally placed over here then they moved over here the question the question like really emphasize that this is damp and this is dry so of course they are responding to the changes in the environment so it's going to be sensitivity nutrition definitely cannot because they're not consuming anything it's not affecting their mass or their growth or their length of the body nothing growth definitely not so it's going to be D which species can breed with Prunella vulgaris to produce fertile offspring? So if you want to produce a fertile offspring, both the genus and the species must both be the same. If neither one of them are the same, no fertile offspring can be produced. So it's definitely going to be D. Because if you see over here, it's they say Prunella modularis, Vespula vulgaris. None of these match the thing properly. I mean both the genus and the species must be the same for that one part but since both of them are not the same they don't match with the original um, question so none of these species can breed with this to produce a fertile offspring so this is basically one rule you need to remember um, if you have if you want to produce a fertile offspring both the genus and the species must be the same right it's like the same thing um, since humans are known as homo sapiens and if you want to I mean I'm, gi I'm just giving a very illogical example but like if you think in this way humans can't breed with animals in a natural way at all because animals are totally different species humans are totally another different species so 
since none of the genus and species are not the same, so obviously no offspring can be, can be produced. It's, I'm giving a very ridiculous example, but this is what you can see around you. So similarly in this question, this prunella will tell you, so you don't know what the hell is this, right? But you need to understand that both the genus and species must be the same to produce a fertile offspring. Without that, no offspring can be produced. All right? So now, what is the correct order of anthropoid groups from those with the most legs to those with the fewest legs? So there's actually a category under anthropods. You have like four different and um, the, the least legs you could find is on insects, then followed by arachnids, then crustaceans and neuropods. So now the question is asking with the most legs, so it's definitely got to be this because neuropods are basically centipeds, earthworms, which have like dozens of legs on their body parts. So definitely got to be neuropods. When you, when you see the word neuropods, just imagine it's centipeds, it's earthworms, those you know crawling insects on the ground that have like a lot of legs, right? So it's definitely got to be neuropods. Crustaceans are crabs. Uh, they're about like, I don't know, four or six, I don't remember, but four to six legs they do have. So it's definitely this, because it's not just limited crabs, the other species on the crustaceans as well, they classify as that. And then arachnids, not all spiders have like four, four pairs. Some of them may have three, some of them may, may even have more than that, but crustaceans definitely have more than arachnids. And then finally you have like insects, for example you have the fly, the bee, they have like six legs if not mistaken, or just imagine an ant, an ant has like six legs, that's an insect. So you know the animal kingdom, the first chapter of this book, I mean I as a student I found that very difficult to remember because there are like different kinds of categories with your own distinct features which are not easy to remember you got to remember for the sake of your exam so this is like that this is a relatively new type of question they introduced in this format i mean they never really asked in the previous past papers with the most legs or with the most thing to the fewest things because if it's, it's if it's such a question that it's like literally you gotta remember like one by one all of them which is definitely really confusing but you gotta do it next one the diagram shows four animal cells as seen under a light microscope. What will be present at X? So if it's an animal cell, you need to remember it's definitely, it can't, they don't have cell wall. Forget about cell walls, okay? Animal cells do not have cell walls. So now if you see in the example over here, the one he mentioned cell membrane cell walls. So cell walls, cut that out of your list. Now, so the left is cell membrane. Now if you see the option here, one cell membrane, two cell membrane, like what the hell is this? Like, which one is? So confusing. They always have confusing questions. This is the point of exam, actually. But um, if you see the diagram clearly, you have like all four animal cells combined. And if you if you see over here, in a first glance, you will think that oh, it's just one cell membrane. But in reality, it's not. It's actually two, both combined. If you see the end over here, if you can see my this cursor, this is one end of one animal cell, which is one cell membrane. And the other end of another cell member is over here. So combined is going to be two. You, because if you normally look at the thing that the center of attention, the center of attention is this whole thing that's combined, which we think it's one, but reality is actually two. If you see properly, one is coming, one cell member is coming from here, another cell member is coming from both connect to combine one. But in reality, what will be present in X is actually going to be two cell membranes, not one. They don't really combine reality, but it's just that in the picture it looks like that. But you gotta see these two things over here if you find it confusing so it's definitely going to be two cell membranes and then the diagram shows a root hair cell so if you see um this is a cytoplasm this is a back hole this is a nucleus it's a cell wall so how is this cell modified for the absorption of water so there are actually a few features of root hair cell that you need to remember one of them is that they have a large surface area for like efficient absorption and um, if they have a large surface area it's also good for the osmosis and active transport that takes place in the roots so there's certain features there are just like two or three features for root hair cell that you remember which are literally the same for other features of the plants 
So if you remember that one of them, then it's easy to answer this. So if you read this out, it has a cellular cell wall. This doesn't have any correlation with absorption of water. It has a thin layer of cytoplasm, no relation with absorption of water. It has a large surface area, yes. Why? If it's a large surface area, there's more molecules of water coming in contact with the large surface area of the root hair cell, which means there will be higher chances of osmosis taking place, so there will be faster osmosis taking place in the roots. So that's good, because plants need water for their growth. And it has a large black hole. This does not have any relation with absorption of water at all. So it's definitely going to be large surface area. Now, a student draws a diagram of a mitochondrion. The diagram has a magnification of times 20,000. So this is a mitochondrion. The diagram is 5 cm long. So this is the image. The image is 5 cm long. And now they're asking the actual size of the mitochondrion. So you need to remember the magnification formula. If you don't remember, there's a triangle actually for that. So let's say, um, I'll just write for you here. Give me a second. Right, so this is the magnification formula that you can remember. It's very simple to remember. This, I mean, the way how I remember is it's like I A M I M I stands for image, A stands for actual, and M is magnification. You guys must be knowing this by now, definitely. So now that they're asking the actual size, so they definitely want you to calculate in micrometers. So if you see the unit giving here is actually centimeters, but You've got to connect the micrometer. This is a very important mis this is very, um, silly mistake that's done, that's done by a lot of students. They don't convert it into micrometers because a lot of times the, the units for this magnification question has to be converted into micrometers. And um, so if you convert one centimeter to micrometer, you will have like, um, it's about like 10,000 micrometers. So it's five centimeters, it's going to be 50,000 micrometers. And then you place this 50,000 into the magnification not that they want actual size so the image size which is uh, 50,000 micrometers divided by the magnification which is 20,000 so you get 2.5 micrometers so it's done so it's going to be D. Now seven a jar of air was placed upside down on top of a jar containing a brown gas as shown which process has taken place so a brown gas at start this is the air air and the brown gas after one hour okay which process taking place a diffusion both upwards and downwards looks correct because this will move forward this will move down this diffusion downwards only this doesn't make sense because it's downwards and it will be looking compact actually diffusion upwards it will still like one part will be empty one part will be very compacted so this does not look like that diffusion osmosis this is definitely a very stupid um, answer there's no such osmosis thing going on here so it's definitely not the right one so it definitely got to be diffusion both upwards and downwards because at start this is the brown gas this is the air afterwards they both diffuse upwards and downwards from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration if you understand this thing you can know that the brown gas moves from a high concentration to a lower concentration until they both even out okay but if you see b and c if it's just like downwards meaning the air just moved down that means it's just gonna be so compact over here there'll be a lot of molecules but it's not like that what they show in the picture after one hour you can see they're all even out so it definitely gotta be both upwards and downwards only then it's possible to even it out now which row describes active transport so if it's active transport, just remember it requires energy and now that they ask, they put the thing over here, energy from respiration in, definitely yes. Now particles move through a cell membrane from a region of lower concentration to a region of high concentration. So active transport is always against the concentration gradient and if it's against the concentration gradient, it's always from lower to higher. And this is, you need to remember the, 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 the points both osmosis and diffusion move from higher to lower which is normal to even out but active transport move against meaning they move from lower to higher and they need energy active transport is the only process that requires energy osmosis and diffusion do not require 
The base on the strand of a DNA molecule have the sequence C A G C T. What's the sequence of the base on the other strand? So just remember the, those two pairs. A pairs with T and G pairs with C. So it's gotta be A T G C. So if it's C, it gotta be G. If it's A, it's gotta be T. If it's G, it gotta be C. If it's C, it gotta be G. So you gotta literally match one by one. Sometimes what the question does it, or what you guys normally might do is, you guys normally do it like, oh, if it's C, probably it's gonna be um, G. If it's A, also, for example, if it's C, it's gonna be D. So yeah, it's clear, this is probably gonna be D. This answer is gonna be D. But in fact, it's wrong, because you need to match one by one all the letters properly with the options given below so if you just match one of them and you think it's correct it's wrong you've got to make sure all the letters are matched with the pair with the options given to you now the graph shows the effect of temperature on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction so this is how it's a very normal uh, graph for enzyme so which statements are correct the collision of the collision frequency between substrate and enzyme increases between x and y it's correct the shape of the active side is altered between y and c definitely it is because that's how the graph is showing the enzyme is denatured irreversibly at x and z okay the enzyme is denatured irreversibly only at z but it's not denatured at x not yet so it can't be one two and three it's definitely a very weird thing Denature irreversibly is only at Z, not at X. X, the reaction just starts. So how the hell is it denatured? This thing logically, so it definitely gotta be one and two only, so it's gotta be B. Right? So let's move on to the next one.